Hi, and welcome to lesson five of week one of Julia programming for nervous beginners, where we talk about string literals. So we've got in place a number of things, particularly how to form uh, valid expressions in Julia and why the rules are so very strict. So the idea today is to tell you exactly what string literals are, to use the string operators uh, ampersand and caret, which is maybe I should use also the terms concatenate and repeat, and to enter some characters that are not available from a uh, standard international keyboard at the REPL, and then uh, as a completion, it's not that important on the course as a whole, to use uh, the plus and minus as operators that can combine characters with integers. So after this lesson, uh, the idea is to build string literals using characters and other strings and the operators, to insert characters by other means than finding them on your keyboard, and to do some very simple character arithmetic. So what exactly is a, a string literal? So um, recall that if we want to store a string value um, uh, by using a variable name, then we have to give the variable name on the left, as in that, and we have to use the assignment operator, and then we have to give the actual string value in code like that. Press enter, and we see it echoed back on the screen. So uh, what this means is that a, B, C, D, E, F. It was actually physically stored somewhere in your computer. A, bit, a little bit of, of electronics, a little bit of voltage changes, and that is what we mean by it takes up a little bit of memory. And to be precise, there's a way of encoding the voltage changes in your computer so that they mean a particular character. And so that little bit of memory, the first part is taken up by the code for A, then the second part is taken up by the code for B until you get to the last. And that storage in memory is what we call a string literal. That's sitting in memory. Of course, the only way we can actually get at that little bit of memory is via the variable name that is bound to the memory. Okay, so uh, this asterisk is the concatenate operator, and let us immediately combine the string Julia, concatenate or combine or join with the uh, string programming because this is of course what our purpose is. And if we want it as one word, we can do it like that. If we don't want it as one word, we have to put a space in somewhere. We might as well put it in at the start of programming and then we have it as two words. So, um, here's another example. We concatenate the string hello. There's the concatenate operator then. There's another string between two quote marks. And it contains a comma and a space. And then there's another concatenate operator. And then there's the string world. And if we do that, then we have hello. Concatenate that with comma space, sorry, comma space, and we concatenate that with world. So it's important to, when you read things like this in Julia, it's, it's quite tempting to sort of think, oh, there's a comma, there's the st first string, and there's a st and there are only two strings. But one has to learn how to read these expressions in Julia. So the important thing here is that there are these two concatenate operators and they are between a string and another string and another string. That's how um, they combine them. They are delimiters, of course, in a certain sense, although in this case they're also operators. So the delimiter of the string on the left are the two uh, double quote marks, and then the delimiter of this string, the two double quote marks, the delimiter of this string, the two double quote marks, and then separating them, the operators. And that's how we should really learn how to read these strings. 
So if we enter that, then we, of course, get the original string that the whole course started with. So this is an alternate and more long-winded way of doing the same thing. Um, we could use characters instead. So instead of doing it this way, we can just put a character there. Let's say the character space, um, and that works just as well. Yeah, and so that doesn't look as well as we want it to look, so maybe we should put in another character, uh, and then this starts to become a bit more tedious. There's a concatenate operator, then we have this character, which is the empty space character, and then another character a concatenate operator. And we could, in fact, do this entire message as a whole lot of separate characters, concatenating them all into one string, which is a very tedious way of doing things. But occasionally it's useful to build a string with a special character, or maybe not a special character, just a character or two uh, in a program. So if um, sometimes we just want to repeat strings, so we can repeat my, concatenate my, concatenate my, and get, let us do that. Well, uh, instead of just concatenating it, let's just repeat it. We have the repeat operator, and we say how many times we want to repeat it, and we get my, my, my. So that is equivalent to that string with the two concatenate operators, just uh, say that we want to repeat it three times. Um, of course, instead of using the, liter the string literals themselves, we can actually first store some literals in, uh, with some variable names and then do the operations on the variable names and we will actually get the, the string that we want to build. I've actually done this previously, so I'm just bringing this up so that we don't have to do it. And I want you to take cognizance of this semicolon. We've mentioned this before, but it's a useful way of suppressing output because what if I l don't use the semicolon there, then I will see these outputs on the screen. Sometimes it's useful to make sure that you have the values that you thought you had, and you can check, I had A, B, C, D, F, is that, yes, that's right, Julia programming, and so on. Um, but in this case, I know that that's what I want, so without further ado, we just enter that, and now we can just concatenate all three, x, operate, y, operate, z, concatenation operators, and Maybe we don't like it. Um, there are two concatenate operators. There's the fact that there's no space here is visible. That shows up there because we didn't put in any spaces here. We didn't put any space there. We didn't put any space there. So um, we could put that in, but I'm not going to bother about it now. Um, let's try and repeat a string. We make yz a string. And we want to repeat that. To make sure that we do repeat it, I'm going to give you the advice of using parentheses, round brackets, always, if there's any doubt that what you want to get um, might not be exactly what you do get if you enter the string. So let's put the repeat on that and we see this is, is a string but this, what's this, this is a string but this, what's this, and so on. <laughs> um, if I leave it out, I might get the same thing, but just look at this. It is actually possible that the repeat operator is the first action carried out, and we get three copies of Z, which is joined onto Y. So Z is, but this, what's this, and Y is, this is a string. And let's see what happens. And indeed, this is a string, and then we have three copies of this, what's this, this but this, what's this. I am recommending for beginners that you don't worry too much about the, the exact rules for which operations are carried out first. You simply put in parentheses to make sure that the operation you do want to have carried out first is carried out first, as in this case, first the join and then the repeat. 
So if we want to enter characters not directly from the keyboard, and there are many reasons to do this uh, in order to be able to use other languages, other alphabets, in order to use mathematical symbols that are not on the keyboard, and a variety of other reasons. They're all available directly in Julia. You can use them in Julia code um, with a small proviso that I will mention at the end. So the Greek alphabet starts with the letter alpha, and I can type it in like this. So what is happening here is that I'm starting with a backslash, and then I'm typing the word alpha in letters. Okay, and once I've got that far, I don't try and hit enter. If I try to hit enter, I would get an error. What I do is I hit tab. Sorry, let me do that again because it's a bit confusing. So I have alpha, and now I hit tab, and I get the character alpha. And Julia looks at this, it says uh, there's no um, quote, quote marks around it, so alpha is just a letter, it must be the start of a variable, and uh, unfortunately no variable with the name alpha has been defined, either by me as the person writing the Julia code, or by the people developing the Julia language as a built-in function or a built-in name. If I want the character itself, then I have to put single quotes around it, and it tells me now I have a Unicode character. Uh, the numerical code is 03B1, the B, all of these, 03B and 1, are hexadecimal characters, if you want to know, but it's not important on this course. Um, if we want to make a string using alpha, then we can say alpha, and we can hit tab. If you, let me demonstrate this. Suppose I've hit ALP and I hit tab then, I don't get the letter alpha. What I get is the unique completion that Julia can find. And I can then hit tab. If the, um, let's say, if I just start with A and I hit uh, um, tab, then what I see are all the possible completions. So I can put L, and all the possible completions, there's still three possible completions. If I put P, then there's only one completion, and then another tab gives me alpha, I complete the string, and as before, we see a Julia string. So this Unicode that I mentioned here, you can actually directly put it in, so you put a character, and you have a slash U, and you have 03B1, and you uh, do that, and you hit enter, and you do see the alpha like that. So this is a technique that we will not be using on this course. I mention it for completeness for those of you who want to access all kinds of um, interesting and, and important uh, alphabets and, and characters that you might know the Unicode of then this is available to you. Um, for the Unicode aficionados among you, uh, Julia implements UTF-8, in fact, not the whole of UTF-8, just a subset of it. And so I can't really tell you exactly what characters are available. You have to find that out for yourself. I should also say that characters like these, they might be available at the REPL, but not in your editor. Then when you type it at the REPL, you see it, but when you want to put it in via the editor, you, uh, you don't see it, and then you can't run it uh, by an including a file, a, a Julia code file. Um, and the opposite is also possible, that you have um, Julia characters that in principle should be available at the REPL of your particular machine. That depends on what your particular machine makes available, that not necessarily all the characters that Julia can recognize, and then you enter it, and Julia thinks it's a fine character, but you don't actually see it on the screen. So, for those reasons, we don't actually play with characters on this course. Um, and just for completeness, because it's something that will not play a big part in the course, but it is something you will occasionally see here and there, um, the operators plus and minus, they can act directly on a character. So if we take uh, 
let's say the character A, make the, the character A, and we add the number 1. So in principle, of course, a character cannot be added to a number. But in Julia, the design has been that when you add the one, you get another character. And um, let's just uh, see what this means. The character A itself has the Unicode 61. The character B has the Unicode 62. So what this does is it gives us the Unicode character which is shifted one up from the Unicode for the character that we have here. So the 61 plus 1 is 62, and it gives us the Unicode character 62. And um, let me, for interest, uh, give you that one. That gives us P, lowercase p. If we do this, we get the Greek letter kappa. And if we do this, we get a Unicode character. Julia is perfectly happy to recognize it. Um, and exactly what this, uh, what this is, however, we get this Unicode character U908, but what this exactly is, we do not know. This particular screen that I'm using here will not give me that particular Unicode character. Um, so. What have we done today? We've looked at string literals. A string literal is simply the actual characters of the string as they are joined in your um, in a place in the computer's memory. The operator with a type with an asterisk, it concatenates string. The operator typed with what is called a caret. It makes a new string by repeating one string. So you have a string, and then you have the operator, and then the number of repeats. And if you want a character that's not available from the international keyboard, they are available through backslash, followed by some letters, uh, and followed by tab. There are also the Unicode ones available, followed by the backslash U and then some digits, but uh, we don't really do that. And for those, you don't have to use tab. So that's it, a, a short a lesson on uh, um, how to make string literals. And that's at the end of lesson five.